Welcome to the Sports Show. I'm Andy Marks. And I'm Byron Saucer. Byron, it was a, uh, a pretty good week for football prognosticators last week. The so worst was. anybody did was 5-1, and one, and that was you. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. Congratulations. 6-0. and oh. Yeah, thank you. 6-0 and oh, as you fish for the compliment. Thank you. I did yeah. go 6-0 and oh, now you that did. you mention it. You did. I know a lot of times I have to tell you what your record was, but in fact you <laughs> did go undefeated last week, and a nice job. Thank you very much. And unlike these first two weeks when we uh, neither one of us wanted to uh, waver too far from what was supposed to happen, we're on the, on the opposite sides of a bunch of games this week. Yeah. The very first one is happening at the strike zone. Yeah, uh, two zero and two teams. Wildwood comes into the strike zone to face Bellevue, um, and you know, speaking of the devil, Bellevue got me last week uh, in Lake Weir. I, I thought the Rattlers would uh, bow up and take care of business. That didn't happen. Uh, I'm betting again that the Rattlers will bow up. Uh, you see what I'm doing there with the mic bow? Yeah, no, I was, I like was gonna. I was gonna so, call it out uh, for everyone to, to notice if you hadn't. So thanks. We. Uh, that's when jokes are good when you have to explain them. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, Bellevue 7-6 here. I don't know what to expect. I really don't. Uh, but I'm hoping Bellevue gets this thing going. And uh, what better place to do it than at home against a struggling Wildwood team. Right. Yeah. It would be a good win for them. They need to get rolling. They've got some games on their schedule that they can win. Yeah. Uh, until they show me, though, I'm looking at Bellevue right now is, is pretty far from that point. Uh, Tavares is not a, not a team that uh, has been strong in the last few years, but Wildwood at least was in a competitive game last week. Bellevue has not been yet. They really got the, uh, uh, they, they just got hammered against both Lake Weir and Crystal River. They're not good losses. These are two teams that Bellevue is either accustomed to beating or should beat just about every, every year they play. Um, I'm not going to give Bellevue the benefit of the doubt anymore after seeing that last week. Unt- until they prove it, I'd love to start picking them again. It's not going to be here. I'll go with Wildwood 28-24. All right, moving on. We have a uh, an old district rivalry that's now just a county rivalry, I guess. Uh, North Marion and Donnellan have gone their separate ways as far as districts, but the Colts are headed out to Tiger Stadium to face 2-0 and Donnellan, and Donnellan has just made a mockery of the early season, just pounded their first two opponents. Uh, North Marion been in two one-point games against uh, tough opponents, though. Now they play number one uh, 3A St. Augustine to a one-point loss and beat 6A Forest uh, and a one-point thriller last week. Uh, this is tough. I mean, it really is. I, I really like Donnellan's team. I think this is probably Beasley's best unit top to bottom, but uh, I think North Marion may just have too many athletes. Defensively, I think, is where they have the uh, the advantage. I think they might be able to line up and run the ball. Chucky Looney can certainly throw it, and I think Donnellan might have a little trouble stopping them. Uh, now, can North Marion stop Donnellan is what it'll come down to, but I'm going to take the Colts 21-20. Yeah, and based on what you said, uh, I kind of like this game to be a shootout for for that very reason. I've got a high score. I'm going to take the other side. It's a game that could go either way. And let me tell you something. This is a big game that I'm really excited about. The uh, the dynamic in this county, uh, for the last few years anyway, has been there's a there's a top tier of football in this county that only Trinity and North Marion has resided in. That's and, true. and we've had teams like Forest and a couple of years ago Bellevue and of course Donnellan. We've had them pecking at the door but not quite getting there. So for that reason, if Donnellan breaks through in this game, uh, it would just be an enormous win for that school, for the program, for the town. They've been looking up in North Marion for how many years now? A lot. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick that to happen. This is a, a really, really good class. This is for Donnellan. This is a, a year that they've been building up to for three years. They got a fantastic group of skill players in Terrence Brooks, in uh, Angelo Cabrera, and Bubba Black, who once again is just off to the races and accumulating huge amounts of yards. I agree with you that I that I think that uh, that defensively North Marion is going to be hard to stop. I think Donnellan is going to be hard to stop too. So I'll say 35 to 32. And this is one, actually, too, uh, interjecting a little bit. Cody Underwood could be the X factor for Donnellan. You know, in years past, North America could sell out to stop the run, and that's pretty much all you had to do. Uh, Beasley likes this kid. He's made some – he's been efficient. I haven't asked him to do a lot. He'll be asked to do a little more, I think, Friday night. And some of those kids at Donnellan that will line up and and go out and try and catch passes, these are kids that are athletic enough to get open against anybody. Indeed. So we have another cross-county matchup, Forrest against Westport. Uh, It's a tough year for Westport. It is. Not a good situation over there right now, and this is probably not the week that they're going to break through and get that win that they need so badly. 
Yeah, no, nah, you know, like you say, uh, a lot of living good came into a, a tough situation. Uh, those coaches over there are doing all they can to make up a lot of ground. Uh, but I don't think this is the week. Forrest, on the other hand, had a, you know, just a rash of early season injuries, which have hurt them. Uh, a couple of close losses. I think Hodges has this group ready. This is a team they should handle. I look for James Brooks to get a little more comfortable in that quarterback role, and I, I see uh, Forrest winning this one handily. Maybe not as. Uh, Big of a blowout as you have, but I'll go 31-13. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering where those 13 points are going to come from. <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't want to get into laughing at Westport because, because they've, they've been through the ringer, and, and Lyle Livingood is a good coach. He's proven that on the basketball court. He's committed to this program, and he's committed to the school. And if these kids stick with them, they've got some winnable games on their schedule. Uh, Lyle didn't make the schedule. Uh, it was pretty easy to look at their schedule before the season started and, and guess 0-4, and, and, and I still think that's the way they're headed. But they got to stay with it. That's been the problem over there at Westport is that things get tough yeah. and, and things then break down, and then by the time the next year starts, you're back at square one again. Yeah. So please, you guys out there at Westport, stay with the grind. You will get rewarded later in the year. On the other side of that coin, I'm going to go with 38 zip. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be pretty over there. So let's move on. We've got a, a, a big game out at... Uh, at Lake Weir this week. Yeah, Vanguard's coming out to Candler. Uh, Lake Weir, who uh, I didn't think could beat Bellevue last week, is now uh, going to host Vanguard, who's been another thorn in their side uh, historically. Uh, they did beat Vanguard last year, but of course everybody beat Vanguard last year. Uh, Alex Castaneda has that team turned around, it looks like. Uh, not only did they beat Westport 31 0 in week one, they played with Trinity through three quarters last week. I think it was a 17 16 game midway through the third. Uh, Cadron Boone, Gray Crow got away from a, a little bit late, but I like Vanguard in this one. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the Knights 24 21. The interesting thing about this game to me is that both teams are going to come in here with some attitude. And uh, if you if you look back one year for Vanguard and you look back three years for Lake Weir. Uh, there was no attitude. There was no swagger. You know, these are programs on the rise, and that's fun. It's gonna. You know, you're going out there. I think you'll have fun. That's a good game. Lake Weir uh, fans have been packing the stadium. They beat Bellevue in a way that good football teams win games. I've already said this in, in a story and on the air earlier this week. But uh, they went out and stuffed it down their throats a little bit. I think Lake Weir has arrived. Um, they're used to uh, the level of competition they're at. Uh, Vanguard. Maybe not yet. We'll see. We'll see a few weeks from now. Maybe, in fact, they have arrived, and I'm not giving them enough credit. Uh, I like Lake Weir's experience playing winning football right now. I'm going to take them in a 10-point win, 24 to 14. Yeah, and, and uh, you know Tracy Curry is uh, is the X factor for them. You know he really is. I mean, this kid can do everything, and I, and I do look forward to seeing him Friday night. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I think best player on the field most games that Lake Weir plays this week. He's, oh, yeah. he's that good. So we got another one, a couple of ranked 2B teams. Uh, Trinity Catholic headed down to Tampa Catholic. It's third year in a row for these teams to play. Uh, they've been 1-1 one one over that time. Trinity won last year. Tampa Catholic won the year before. Uh, it looks like maybe Trinity turned a corner in the second half of that game. You know, we're a little concerned about the offense, uh, you know, the continuity there at quarterback. It looks like Greg Crow is getting a little more familiar with the playbook. They're Opening things up, Cadron Boone caught three touchdowns last week. That's a good sign for them. If they can get the run pass thing going, they're very difficult to defend with Kedrick Rhodes in the backfield. Um, of course, Tampa Catholic's loaded as well. Uh, they got rained out last week, so they only have the season opening win. But I like Trinity in this one. Um, they went down there and won it last year. I think they'll do the same. 27-24 uh, Celtics. Uh, interesting matchup. Um, you know what worries me about Trinity is the defense. You've talked about this before. Yeah. They've given up too many points through the Classic in, uh, in their first couple games. And so, uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. Tampa Catholic, I, I have to say, probably right there in, with Gainesville in terms of just the, the talent of the opposition. Yeah. They've got a, a handful of Division One football players at the very least, yeah. upperclassmen Division One football players on their team. Um, Trinity needs to stop some people while Gray Crow is getting his feet settled there at quarterback. He's he's a, he looks the part. He's clearly talented, but he's young and he hasn't played a lot of games yet. And it's going to be sure. a continuum for him to get there. Uh, this is a state championship game caliber matchup. Although I think Pahokee and Bowles will also have a say in the matter before the end of the year. This is a possible state championship game. Sure. And uh, I'm going to go with Tampa Catholic at home, 42 to 41. And uh, Trinity defense will have to uh, prove me wrong and hold him to less points, and then I'll pick a lesser score next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Exactly. It's exactly. 
Uh, moving on, we got uh, OCA, 3-0 and Crusaders, who've kind of been my uh, my team this year so far, playing uh, Mich uh, Bishop McLaughlin. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what can you say about the Celtics? The, or, uh, sorry, the Crusaders. They just keep cruising along. I mean, they played their first FHSA opponent last week, dismantled them. Now they have another Sunshine Conference team. This is a team that lost to St. John in the Classic. Uh, we know what OCA did to the Saints. I like OCA big. Uh, 38-13. Yeah, I think the, the Crusaders are also going to win big. I know uh, statistics every week is something that you work hard on over here, and I noticed this week uh, T.J. Moreland is at the running back over it there is. at OCA. He's putting up some big, big numbers. He's, yeah. he's really tearing people up. Uh, and they've also got uh, Stewart, the other back, who can uh, who can do some damage, and a, and a quarterback who's putting up good numbers too. It's a dangerous team. Uh, I don't know, you know, in the FCC if, if they're going to get the, the type of test that I would love to see them get. I want to see yeah. how they would measure against some of the bigger schools around here. Because, and you know, I uh, think that might be the next step for them. I think OCA, now that they're where they are now, uh, I, I think the next step that Etheridge and those guys want to take is maybe trying to play some of the smaller public schools around here and just see exactly where they are in the grand scheme of things. But certainly in the FCC and the Sunshine Conference deal, <clears throat> I definitely uh, I like their chances. Sorry to interrupt No, no, that's that. all right. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Kudos to Coach Etheridge. Uh, they're playing an 0-2 team. The OCA has shown no signs of weakness. There is no reason to pick against them. So let's move on. <laughs> Carrollwood Day School uh, visiting St. John. Carrollwood Day is an undefeated team. Yeah, uh, staying in the Sunshine State Athletic Conference there. Uh, these are two two members of that league. And uh, St. John 1-1, one one, Carroll Day 2-0. Saints uh, looked good last week. But, again, you know, we made uh, a point of – of uh, saying that Seven Rivers is a startup program. That was their first football game. I think Carroll Day is going to be a little more uh, formidable. I'm going to take Carroll Wood 28-14. Yeah, I'm going to take them 40-21. Uh, to 21. St. John's got to step up and, and show that the OCA loss was a fluke. Uh, this is a team with a winning record coming in. I'm going to go with the visitors. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff to argue about next week when we, when we do a little rewind, and uh, I'm sure we will do that. In the meantime, we hope to catch some of you out at football stadiums uh, as you catch that catch because you caught the football. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, catch some of you out there on Friday nights uh, watching your favorite team at their stadium. If not, we've got a, a brand new fancy scoreboard at Ocala.com. Uh, you can always get live updates from yeah. every game, and you can see everything that's happening at the same time pretty close to real time. We're proud of it. Take yeah. a look if you can. Yeah, I've actually been setting that up in the press box and, uh, and following that the first couple of weeks. It's nice. It's a good way to get the, uh, the scores to the PA guy and let everybody know what's going on. But yeah, if you're stuck at home, uh, log on and follow the scores. It's a good way to do it. And uh, we'll see you next week.